Welcome, everybody. It's time for another edition of Sales Pipeline Radio. So grab your board. We're going to catch the latest wave and ride it along with Matt Hines here of Hines Marketing. Welcome, Matt. Hello, Paul. How are we doing? Okay. You sound like you're uh, far away or, or in uh, some remote location. Am I echoey? Do I sound like am I in a tunnel? Am I a <laughs> you sound a little... A little like oh, that, but we're well, we're a little better now. Okay. All right, well, that's good. Well, uh, yeah, no. So, got back last night from a great week down in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, at the Content to Conversion Conference. It was a great week. One of my favorite conferences of the year. It's kind of the beginning of the or late winter and spring conference schedule, and really combines content and demand gen marketers together. So, it was a good week and a good, I guess, segue to today's topic. We're going to be talking with Shannon Dougal, Vice President of Marketing at Uberflip, about content marketing, what's working. Hope you're going to ask her why this term Uber is. So hot now here everywhere. It's Uber everything. Everything's the well, Uber. And somewhat controversial if you follow the news lately uh, yeah. relative to, to Uber, the company. But no, I, I couldn't imagine a company further away from sort of Uber's cultural and PR woes and Uber Flip and the work that they're doing. So excited to have Shannon on today. And Shannon, thanks very much for joining us. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you were down at this conference as well, and I know you just got back like last night, this morning, and so probably like a lot of us kind of working on fumes to finish off the week here, but you know, it was exciting for me to see the continued advancement on content, I mean, the continued investment in content. I think more and more companies, especially in B2B, are realizing the importance of content marketing to their efforts. Uh, we'll talk a little bit here about the study that we did in the fall that kind of looked at the content that's working and the features that are separating great effective content from others but you know in your position you know running marketing for a content marketing company what are you seeing in the field especially as we now sort of get our sea legs under us for 2017 what are some of the trends in content marketing that are most pronounced right now so it's very interesting being a marketer who is marketing to marketers in the content world you definitely see a big spectrum so you see those on the the cutting edge and you see those that are up and coming so it's definitely interesting out there Definitely seeing um, overall that B2B marketers believe that content is important and it's more important than ever, which is not surprising. You can't have paid, owned, or earned marketing without content. So definitely get that that's an awesome trend that we're seeing to continue to increase. And you know what? It's interesting because I was reading um, a study the other day. It was a CB that said 84% of B2B marketers are planning to increase their investment in content in 2017. So you definitely see that people are looking at continuing this trend. Um, And they also noted that 65% of B2B marketing budgets are spent in some form of content investment. So we are seeing that there's a lot of value put into marketing. But I would also say, though, that we're hearing from a lot of B2B marketers that they're just not getting the value out of content that they thought they would, that they say that their content is underperforming. And so to me, this, this kind of means two things. either means that their content is not very good or it means that the experience surrounding the really good content isn't performing to the way that consumer of their content need to perform. This morning on Sales Pipeline Radio with Shannon Dougal, who's the Vice President of Marketing at Uberflip. Yeah, I I think the CEB data is really interesting. I think you've got people spending a lot more money on content marketing, investing more in content efforts. On the downside of that, we're seeing companies that aren't able to really measure the impact. They're not seeing the results. Some of that could be the, the measurement tools they do or don't have. Some of it could be that they're just producing more of the same content everyone else has. And, you know, we did this study in the fall that really in part asked what helps effective content stand out. What were some of the features that you've seen? What are some of the elements of content that you're seeing across industries that is helping companies sort of not only gain attention, but really sort of drive the kind of education and engagement that companies are looking for? Yeah, I mean, you've touched on it right there. Speaking about engagement, for content to be successful, it definitely definitely has to be engaging. And uh, I think that there are a few elements to engagement that we need to think about. One is the type of medium. You know, different people like to consume their content in different ways. Some people like to read it. Some people like to listen to it. Some people like to interact with it. You know, playing with the different mediums of content helps with engagement. But I think there's another aspect to that, too, which is you have to be creating insightful, new, relevant content for your audience. can't just produce content that everybody else is producing. Definitely see a loss in engagement, which kind of leads to the other area that I think it's personalization or customized content is something else that is definitely a trend. And 
in addition to that, it has to be action-oriented. You can't just have a piece of content and not expect something to happen at the end of it. Engagement, personalization, action-oriented. I think that's really important. These are not hard problems or not hard, hard challenges for marketers to address. You know, they, these seem pretty common sense, but it really does stand out. And that last one is really important, I think, for people to think about. I mean, you know, we're not expecting top of funnel content in complex B2B environments to close deals. You know, we're not expecting you to read a blog post and buy necessarily right away. So talk a little bit about what, what does next step mean? If you've got someone at the beginning of a buying journey at the top sort of a buying stage, what's some examples of next steps? There's a few things that I think we need to think about then when we're looking at that. So you get somebody in, um, they're interested in your top of funnel content, you're starting to educate them, you are now wooing them over with another piece of very relevant content. You understand their intent based on the actions that they've taken at the top of the funnel. And now you want to say, okay, let's get you into our database and make you a marketable future customer advocate instead of a buyer or a prospect because they're people, not just leads and numbers. We need to understand what it is that the consumer, individually that consumer needs for the next stage of the buyer journey. Mapping out a buyer journey is so critical. They have different needs, different intents at every single stage of interaction they have with your organization, and the information requests are going to be very different. So I think first and foremost, Understanding what their problems are, where they stand inside the buyer journey, and aligning your content to that. And then that is the best and most efficient way to get somebody to take action on your content. Let's talk a little bit about you know that content at the top of the funnel and the level of not just precision but discipline and patience required to make that work. And I specifically want to address some of the objections that I've heard from people relative to content marketing as the category has matured. Sometimes feel like they'd rather spend money on demand gen than on content. They're not convinced that measuring sort of you know attention and engagement is going to lead to a closed deal. And maybe again, that's part of the reporting. I ask these questions mainly because I see these objections a lot from the marketplace. And yet there's ample evidence throughout the market. I mean, you know, when there's an investment in content marketing, that is such a more efficient investment. I mean, that you get such a higher ROI over time from investing in the right type of content and engagement platforms and, and strategies. But that isn't an immediate return. When you guys see that in your pipeline, when you see that from your customers, how do you address that and how are your customers then, even in their own environment, that maybe buy Uberflip and yet still are educating their executive teams on why this is important? What are the what are the messages and angles that they're using there? Yeah, um, that's a great question, actually. I think that I was asked this the other day, C to C, actually. The question was, what do I value more? Do I value more in terms of engagement or do I value more in terms of demand generation? I think the simple answer is you need both. You can't have one without the other. And I think that the beautiful thing is, is that we understand as smart marketers that you definitely need to have that engagement in order to educate the consumer of the content. You need to put the effort in to get your prospect or your future customer understanding that there's going to be value with your brand. So you do have to put that in place. But I'm starting to see that the content marketers are connecting the content to lead to revenue attribution dots, which I think is amazing because that's the best way to show your CEO or your board that investment in content actually has true revenue results. So historically, we were measured on engagement and sort of stopped there, considered more of a cost center. And of course, that is, like I said, very important. But being able to tie this to the impact and revenue, it gives content and the marketer themselves the muscle to prove the, the valuable element of marketing. I think it's interesting to sort of think about the evolution of that understanding inside organizations. And sometimes it's not just putting direct ROI on the content, but the marketing organization itself adopting that profit center mentality. Have you seen that as well with a lot of your client organizations when they adopt the executive dashboard as their own dashboard? Is there a greater level of patience that starts to exist? Do those organizations get more time? to be able to prove this impact? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, I would say that, you know, we're starting to see a trend as well that if you're doing your content marketing, marketing in general, but specifically content marketing right, that you can align your content across the entire revenue engine. So what I mean by that is you look at marketing and you look at sales and success. Every interaction that a prospect would have with your organization during the buying process, and this can have a significant impact on revenue. You know, if you look at the content at the top of the funnel as awareness stage,
page, you know that you need to scale that content throughout the entire buyer journey in order to recognize that impact. And I think that having buy-in at the top of the funnel, when you're producing content at the top of the funnel and you see the revenue impact that it has as it goes through, you can then start to attribute pipeline to the content. We actually, in our study, we did see that an increase in content investment has a positive impact on pipeline and vice versa. A decrease in content investment has a negative impact. So it's just interesting to see. The differences are stark, right? And I think that enough companies that are investing in content marketing, we're starting to see this a little bit in sales enablement as well, where there's enough companies doing it, enough companies not doing it, where you can look at not only how they're executing on these strategies, but then you can look at what's the impact for the overall organization. And even without necessarily knowing you know, how much pipeline each individual blog post creates, because that's just kind of a ridiculous question in general, right. is you, there's direct correlations you know, between all of this happening. So spending time today on Sales Pipeline Radio talking to Shannon Dougal. She's the Vice President of Marketing at Uberflip, a fantastic, fast-growing company in the content marketing growth space. I want to ask you, before we have to head to break here, Shannon, the sometimes controversial question in terms of creating content. Should sales professionals be tasked with creating content for their organization? My opinion on this is that marketing should support sales needs in creating the content. So I love the idea, you know, we're just talking about marketers owning the entire buyer journey as it relates to content. And if we do that right, then we can affect the entire revenue engine. And part of that is making sure that we're not working in silos in terms of our voice and message and brand that gets to that person who's going through the buying journey. Um, So I think that that the marketer can own the buyer journey in terms of content. They create content at the very beginning of the journey, and they can then support through sales enablement, create the right content for the consumer of that content during, I guess, the engagement stage all the way through to the consideration stage. Then there's that one consistent voice and experience that buyer has throughout the journey. And I think that it also alleviates the pressure that sales has in order to produce the content. They are building the relationships with sales, and if they have access to the right content, they can just grab that, share it with them, and it just makes seamless experience for the uh, consumer of the content. We've got to take a quick break, pay a few bills. We'll be right back in a couple minutes with more with Shannon Dougal from Uberflip talking about content marketing, a lot more about where we think this is going, how companies can stay ahead of the curve, how companies that feel like they're underinvesting can and should get started, and uh, much more. We'll be right back. Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering information, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity or a blueprint for a guide to what's really working and how to apply it specifically to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. Download it free at HeinzMarketing.com. Okay, let's pick it back up with Matt and his guest. Thank you, Paul. Hey, bye, Paul, I, I forgot to ask you, you know, with the uh, the weather situation is the, the drama <laughs> of Sales Pipeline Radio so far this year. Paul, our producer, works out of Southern California, which, as many of you know, has been in a severe drought and in the last month has been in, in the opposite situation. Yeah. How are we doing down there? Well, today the sun is out, the skies are clear and blue, and we're uh, assuming that the worst is behind us. But you never know. One more storm could be right around the corner here. Well, I'll tell you, I will be down there a week from today for a short visit. So when I think of Southern California, when I think of flying in LAX, I do not want flooded runways. So if you can <laughs> no. keep that stuff at bay for a little bit, that'd be fantastic. Fantastic. All right, we'll, we'll work on that. I appreciate that. We would not be the same sales pipe idea without you, Paul. Thanks you for all the hard work you do. Thank you for everyone for joining us each week. Uh, we are live every week Thursday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. You can also subscribe to Sales Pipeline Radio directly to your favorite podcast player. We're available at the iTunes Store and Google Play. And you can catch every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. I believe we're somewhere around episode number 58. I look at some of my favorite podcasts, and they're, in the, they're somewhere in the mid-hundreds. They're just way, way ahead of us. But uh, you know, better late than never. So every episode on demand at salespipelineradio.com. If you like our conversation today with Shannon Dougal talking about the future of content marketing and want to share that episode with your colleagues, with your friends, with your peers, you can catch that on the podcast. Podcast on the website. We'll have a, a breakdown and a transcripted version of this conversation on our blog at HeinzMarketing.com.
So Shannon Dougal, Vice President of Marketing at Uberflip, you know, for companies that had a content strategy, but it's been really more sort of random acts of content, right? They do a blog post here or there, and they occasionally might do a webinar. There's no cohesive strategy. Like, how do you get started with developing that? I think a lot of people may look at that like other initiatives. They're not doing sales enablement and others, and they just they get flustered and aren't really sure where to start. What's the roadmap to getting up to speed here? Great question. First of all, you need to look at what the objective is with your content strategy. Are you trying to influence revenue in the end. And if that's the case, what type of content do you need in order to do that? And how can you scale that content across the entire buyer journey? So there's, I think there's the tip of the day is you can create content for the top of the funnel, especially insightful pieces. So let's just say you've recently done a webinar or created an ebook. I think from that content, you need to figure out how you can repurpose that content for later stages in the funnel. So I have an example. We created an ebook series, The Four Pillars of Content Marketing. And we created, uh, it was a bundled series of four ebooks, and we were interviewing and talking to an expert in the marketing industry. And we now pull from that in order to provide some stats, and we pull that information and put it into our sales deck so that when one of our AEs is talking to somebody, they can say, oh, hey, look, here's an expert in the industry who's talking about this really relevant point. So I think because, I mean, we know that marketers are busier than ever. There was a stat that I'd heard 50% of marketers delay going to the washroom in order to finish a project that they're working on. So we're not even taking time to go pee anymore. So I think that we need to figure out a way to go pee. Um, And in doing so, if we start to consider creating content through the entire buyer journey, that sounds like big content, just like big data, big content. We can't be producing that much content. So what we need to do is we need to scale the content across the entire buyer journey. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people, I mean, there's a good stepping stones to sort of getting into the, the, the process of building out and really growing a content marketing program. I mean, you're never really done, I think, maturing great content marketing programs. you got to make what you're doing unique. And I think, you know, the other thing a lot of people forget is, you know, when you're starting out, important is not that you're churning out a ton of content, but that you understand your target audience, you understand stages of the buying journey, and that you're good content in front of some folks. And in many cases, you know, and I think this speaks well to the platform that Uberflip offers you, this isn't just content you're creating. This can be content you're curating from other places where you become the hub. You become the source of a diverse, comprehensive, and highly valuable set of content that keeps your customers engaged. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Good color commentary. So so what what, uh, what should we be thinking about moving forward? I mean, I think the, the market is going to continue to diversify. I mean, it's interesting. We weren't doing a, a podcast even just a year and a half ago, and this has become a critical part of our strategy. Should people think about measurement? Should they think about diversity of formats? Is alignment with the buying journey sort of most important? How would you sort of stack rank those in terms of priorities of program design for marketers moving forward? Yeah, so I think that when I was looking through the study that we had done, it was interesting for me to see that when people were putting value on content and the outcome that they were looking for, most had put it on the engagement level, which understandably makes sense. We do certainly want engagement with our content. Uh, that's the first step to, to making sure that our content is successful. But what I thought was super interesting is that there was much lower number who had put importance on customization or personalization of content. And I think that we're going to start to see an uplift in that. I think the trend is going to be that we need to get to that point. I keep talking about the Netflix era versus the Blockbuster era. You know, back in the day, Blockbuster was very generic, alphabetized. It wasn't personalized. They didn't know what I wanted when I walked into Blockbuster. But if I turn on my Netflix today, right away, it's serving up content that they know based on who I am and what I've done in the past of what I'd like to see right now. And so consumers, the consumers of content, like I'm a consumer of the Netflix content, I expect to be given content that only I'm interested in. And I want to see that from B2B organizations as well now. So I think that there's going to be an uplift in that personalization or customization of content for those buyers who are coming in based on segment, based on where they are in the buyer journey. So I would say that 
but that's probably the direction, um, it, and it definitely will take some orchestration. I mean, it's definitely going to get to the point where you need to determine mapping out that content to the buyer journey based on segment and uh, maybe even going deeper and, and pulling information that you have in your database to determine, you know, what it is that, that they spoke to last and then serving up content that's relevant to that. So I think personalization is going to definitely take take a, a huge step forward in that. Mind you, at the same time, I would say that we need to continue to evolve what we do in terms of content to elevate engagement. Again, in the study, it was interesting to see that I think it was 75%, I'm pretty sure it was 75% of consumers of content don't find that the content they're reading very engaging, and yet 76% of the content creators felt that their content was very engaging. So there's a big disconnect there. <laughs> so I think, uh, right? yeah, <laughs> it, it, so we referenced this research a couple times, and we've got a couple more minutes here as we wrap up with Shannon Dougal, Vice President of Marketing from Uberflip. If you go to uberflip.com uh, and you go to the webinar page, you can see they, it's the, we called it Uncover the B2B Marketing Trends That Matter. You can see an on-demand video of that sort of summary of a lot of the research. Just really quickly as we wrap up, also, just uh, I guess in 15, 20, well, 30 seconds, give people a, a sense for what is Grade My Stack? What, is, what offers that and where can people find it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Grade My Stack, you can enter in whatever tools you're using in your stack and it will produce a report that tells you how your stack stands up against what we think the best practices are. It identifies if there's any white space in your stack and recommendations for how you can create a solid stack. So Grade My Stack. Um, yeah, I got to catch that is www.grademystack.com. Definitely check that out. If you want to learn more about the content marketing trends research report, go to overflip.com, find the webinar page. You'll find an on-demand version of that uh, report as well. want to thank very much our guest, our, uh, our travel-weary guest, Shannon Dougal, Vice President of Marketing from Uberflip, for joining us today. If you want to catch a replay of this event and learn more, uh, share this with your colleague. You can certainly find that on salespipelineradio.com. We will be back again live next week, 2.30 Eastern, 11. 1130 Pacific with more leaders in the sales and marketing space sharing what's working today and working tomorrow to help you close more deals between now and then. On behalf of my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio with your host, Matt Hines of Hines Marketing. It's part of the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.